Now when it comes to doing the edge, we need to be able to wrap the tape around each side. So we put it here, we wrap it around there, and then we wrap it around the other side so the edge is completely encased. Now this is because I'm using 20 mil Marmox board. However, if you're using like a five mil board or perhaps a 10 mil board, then you really don't have to do this. You would just apply a coat of thin set on the side there and you would be fine, you know, here and the sides. However, because this is 20 mil and I like using a thicker substrate, I'm going to apply an alkaline resistant adhesive mesh tape. Now, of course, the adhesive on these can be not so sticky or it could be quite aggressive. This particular one here is probably middle of the range. It's not, it's not hugely aggressive, but it just doesn't let go either. But when you're bending around an edge like this, it's, you're expecting the tape to actually conform to how you want, and it's not going to want to do that. This tape is designed to be applied flat. And it's important really that you do use an alkaline resistant mesh tape because the thin set is very alkaline, and so you don't want to compromise your mosaic. So by using this tape, it, it certainly helps reinforce the edge along here and being alkaline resistant, the thin set will not affect it. So what I tend to do is, uh, I tend to put it along here like this and go right to the edge there, and then I flatten it out. And like I, you know, like I say, this is not designed to go over a cement surface like this. And then I cut the end, so it's flush. So therefore, we're actually asking the tape to do something it wasn't designed for. However, what you can do is you can use staples and either stainless steel staples or zinc coated staples, which these are, or you could use nails or uh, those uh, U-shaped nails as well that they use for uh, fences. And they're galvanized and that will be fine. So, but in this particular case, I'm just going to put a staple in here every so often and what this will mean that we can now push this down and over itself so we fold this over and then we then fold that over again I'll put a staple in there now if you've got a if you're using a mesh tape and it's quite aggressive in adhesive, then you don't need to use staples or nails or anything like that. However, I do tend to do this because it does make it a lot easier. So that's that side, that's the top there, and then of course that's the other side. And I might even just put a couple more in here, although it's not really necessary because the thin set, which we're going to do after I've completed this edge, will be next. Now, when it comes to the side, again, we do the same thing. We put it over the top of the Marmox board. We repeat the same procedure. And again, fold it back over on itself, or on that side, I should say. Bring it over. I probably should have used a smaller piece of board just to show you, rather than this very large piece. Now this is only just because we're applying a thin set edge on it. And of course, the edge has got a styrene type center. And this being Marmox board in the weedy board, I think it might be a blue color. But either way, there are different boards and if it's got a, if it's got a soft core in the center and it's going to be used outside, this is really 
I consider to be the best way of moving forward. So what I'll do is I'll continue doing the other two sides. Okay, I've got everything pretty well ready. I've got my thin set here in the bowl. And uh, when you're mixing thin set, just make sure that you go by the manufacturer's directions on the packet or the technical data sheet because you want to mix it correctly because there are different thin sets and you need to make sure you choose one that's suitable for the substrate, the environment it's going into, and of course the tessera. Uh, because that's very important. So all I'm going to do now, and it is a reasonably messy job, so make sure you use gloves and old clothes. And all I'm going to do is just now get this and apply it across here. And I've got my little spreader thing here. And that's all we're going to do. We're just going to apply a thin coating over the top of it. Also, because this piece that I'm doing is going to be a rustic type of piece, I'm not looking for a perfect uh, edging on it because it is like a, a farm rustic piece. So I'm just looking for an edging that's going to protect the Marmox board. And that's all I'm going to be doing. I'm just spreading it like that. And really, I haven't come across an easy way to do this. It's really just a matter of applying it and even on the edge here Just applying it and you can use your fingers if you want just make sure that you've got your gloves on And after you've left it for Probably after you've done this and you've left it you can come back a little bit later and smooth it out a bit more uh, So you can do that the other thing that you can do is you can also sand it when it's dry uh, when it's cured. But the only thing is you have to make sure that you wear a P2 or an N95 dusk mask. That's very important because this does contain silica and you don't want to be breathing in the dust. And yes, it does look messy, I know, but it's all doable. Now, obviously, if your piece is going in a frame, then you don't need to do any of this at all uh, because your frame will protect that styrene type edge but because this is not going in a frame we need to protect that edging i'm only roughly putting it on at the moment i can get there a little bit later and smooth that out it's very hard to do this when you're on a video and you're trying to not get in the way as well and then you can do the other side or you can continue around that edge and then as it's been curing for a while probably about half an hour I'll come back and just smooth out those edges a bit more and this is just the way I do it there's lots of different ways so you may find a better way you might go oh I've just discovered a better way and that's what sometimes happens it is a messy job, but I really don't mind. Okay, and then we continue around. Whether you go around that way or you go around the back, it's totally up to you. Uh, you can use little things like that to help support it if you want, so that you're not laying it on the ground. And you just keep repeating it. Okay, so all I've done is I've gone in and just smoothed it off a little bit with my hands, like this edge here to get it a bit smoother. Or if it's a bit higher here and you want to uh, take some off it, just use your hands because you're not gouging it, just gently. And you need to look at the, keep an eye on the other side as well because what you do on this side, if you're pushing on down here somewhere, could affect the other side. So again, you keep an eye on that and that's just a matter of turning it over and the other thing is too you when it comes to your mosaic and it's finished you can sand the back and you can also paint it as well because like I say you want it to be looking really good I've actually cleaned up all the sides to how I want it now this side is not as good as the other side because I'm actually going to mosaic onto this side. But this side, because this is going to get painted later, I want this to look really good. Now I've actually sanded it back so it's, it's quite flush now all the way around and there's no lumps over it or anything like that. Well, there you go, I finished the sides 
and uh, there's a bit of a close up for you. And I've also added the French cleat system to the top here. So as soon as I've completed the mosaic, it can be hung quite easily. And if you're using these type of boards with a styrene type center, you do need to add your hangers before you start to mosaic onto the substrate because you won't be able to add them afterwards. Now I've also started transferring the design onto the front. So this is almost finished. And once I've done that, then I can then start adding the mosaic to uh, the front there. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've taken something away from it. If you have any comments, put them down in the bottom of the comment section of the YouTube channel. Perhaps you've got a better way of doing these sides. If you have, put that comment down uh, in the uh, YouTube section as well, because I'll be interested in having a, a read of that, and I'm sure many others will too. And I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.